Um, all right, Pimank, today is Thursday. It is December 14th. Welcome to the Dog Walk presented by Barstool Sports. Joined in studio here by Kirk Minahan. Kirk, I've had you on before, but we never mm-hmm. did like a one-on-one in studio, so welcome. Yeah, any, yeah uh, I had you on my show, right? I called Dave it. Were, I've no, you and Dave it. were on yes, my show yes. during the trivia. Yes. Yeah, yeah, with... Yes. Uh, was anybody? It was just the three of us. I feel like somebody else was there. Maybe I'm making that up. I don't know. But yeah, 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 yes. Well, yeah. Colin was there. Oh, Colin was there. Yes. That's right. That's who in, it was. Colin was there. He yeah. was in the house. He was uh, there. Yes. Yeah, but yeah. then you also, I think I had you on on the phone one time, and it was like Kirk Minahan explained Steve Robinson's brain, and then Steve Robinson was on the next day. Steve yeah, Robinson. That's explained. right. Yeah. Jesus, that was when we started. I think. Yes. Yeah. Right. 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 Yes. Because right. I just have an infatuation with Steve Robinson. Still to this day. He's kind of cooled off. He kind yeah. of found his lane, and he he's happy now. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah but yeah. you know, the burgers and brews, and he just pivoted that for like what's going on in Maine. With, uh, yeah, you know. my entire career has basically been predicated on being confident that a producer will say something stupid when I ask him a question. <laughs> I never pause and think, well, maybe they'll say something profound or they'll surprise me. I just say it and kind of wait for them, and then it happens. Yeah, but uh, interested in that though. Yeah. Like you know, like this whole thing doing being and it's not live anymore. But I, I assume most of what you do is live, and I know all, you do, all of it is live. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you don't like go back and edit much. Never, I've never, no, never, I've never edited yeah. anything of my own. Yeah. So, so you know, being in like this kind of thing where you you do expose yourself to making yourself look like an idiot once in a while. <laughs> Definitely. Yes. Definitely. Well, so, I should say Steve and Dave have gone back and cut stuff. I suppose, but, but yeah, it's ninety nine point nine nine percent. But sorry, yeah. Go ahead. And who who like has looked? Who had more idiotic moments, Dave or Steve? Dave, but you know, if you listen to my show, Steve thinks he's smart. So when he's stupid, the payoff is better. Dave would say he's stupid. So when he's stupid, it's kind of it's he just not, shrugs. Yeah, it's not yeah. as exciting. Okay. Um, yeah, for my show, Steve started with me. We, we we I hired him like right when I got hired. I got hired by a bar stool. I left the radio. Uh, officially kicked my way out in the afternoon. That night, I talked to Dave, signed a deal hired steve i think the next day or the day after so that was 18 or 19 18 i forget whatever year that was so steve was with me for like two years dave was with me for like two years and now i have two young guys who i imagine will be with me for a couple of years and then that's it you just run them all out of time. i think i think there's i think there's a shelf life like the way i do a show people listening to this may not know what i do like it's like a essentially like a radio like a talk show yes and I, the producers get are, are vocally active and I ask a lot out of them. So I think there's like a, there's a shelf life. You kind of wear them out, you run them out and I hope they do something better. We have two young guys now. Mm-hmm. So, you know, yeah, I guess. It's like an NFL head coach. You know, you're there, but you know, you're not there long. That's true. That's mm-hmm. true for sure. Yeah. Okay. So I do kind of want to go back though, because I just have a interest in the radio in general. Right. How about yeah. Ralph? Yeah. How'd you feel? I mean, I, well, I mean, he's very sad for me. Like Ralph was a huge part of that. When I was, for me, the show was like, Howard, Jackie, Fred, Robin, Stuttering John, Casey, and like Ralph is like those. Like so, Ralph was a big for me. Like late nineties, early two that like huge part of the show because mm-hmm. he was Howard's best friend. Yeah, for like forty mm-hmm. years. Yeah, I was bummed out about that. But yeah, you're gonna. I'm sorry, you're gonna say no, no, no. Yeah. That that, that kind of brings it all into yeah. it because you were a big Stern guy, big, and I know we kind of uh, we had that in common. But now. Did you always want to get into this though? Like, how did this all come about? Pretty fluky, like <clears throat> for radio, you mean? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So uh, I did some freelance writing for a buddy of mine, Rob Bradford. He had a uh, he had a site called Hometown Publications. This was in like the mid '90s, where he would <clears throat> it was pretty smart at the time. So he would be like, "All right, like a CBA team is playing, right? The old Continental Basketball Association. Mm-hmm. Let's say there was a team in Rockford back then." They were traveling to Springfield, Mass. They wouldn't afford, they, they wouldn't bring a, a travel a beat writer out there. It's too much money for a CBA and who cares? He said, we'd staff it, we'd write it. He'd pay us like a hundred bucks. So they would do that. And he would have, he had a team, he had a calendar up with like eight or nine different people. He was doing this like working like crazy. So I started doing that with him. And then it's some more freelance stuff. And then in 2008, he, would, he was then writing for the Herald. He left for EEI.com. This is when people really started running like these websites were, were you know, radio stations and like ESPN and stuff were starting to really put money in the websites. Mm-hmm. So they hired him to run the website. And he reached out to me and he said, do you want to do some editing? So I just did freelance editing. This is 08. And I said, hey, I wouldn't mind like like doing like a fantasy football thing or whatever. I just kind of want to write because I liked writing. I was trying to write. He's like, sure, go for it. I won't pay you, but you can do it. So I did that. 
I said, yeah, maybe I'll do a column or two. And he said, okay. You know, so I started doing a column. Um, on EEI? On EEI.com. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then uh, he did some radio on the weekends. And one weekend he couldn't make it. And he said, can you fill in for me? With this guy, Mike Mananski, who's still on my, who's actually on my show now uh, once in a while. And I said, sure. So I went down there, did the radio. I knew nothing. Of, I mean, I loved radio, but I didn't know anything. I went in there and didn't know like what, like there was like a cough thing. I didn't know there was a cough button. I didn't know, like the red light, I knew what that meant, but I didn't know you could turn it off. Mm-hmm. Like I was, I was like trying to like whisper something to the producer. I didn't know how to do it. Okay. The first break, the producer called me in the, into the studio, into his little booth there. And he's like, look, he's like, you got to speak up. And he's like, and like you, you can like, you have these buttons and these buttons do this. I was like, holy shit. So I did weekends for a couple of years and, and got really got better at it. Started doing some solo stuff on the weekends. And then that was kind of it. Like a, a morning show position opened. It was Ka- Dennis and Callahan. They had a third guy who did like the news and like from the booth kind of thing, like a almost like a Robin, but less like a Mike Breen on IMS thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, that job was open. I tried out for it. I didn't get it. The guy they hired didn't work out. They called me. Jerry Callahan called me like three or four weeks later, said, we want you we want you to do this job. That that was February of 2012, I think. And then I was on the morning show, and then that that was it. So, 08, how old were you? Uh, 33. 33. 30, I'm 50. Uh, yeah, yeah, I would have been 33, yeah. yeah so, like, somewhere. 22 to 33, what were you Writing, uh, uh, doing some teaching, doing some, uh, um, I worked at, uh, um, what you want to call it, tutoring. A lot of a lot of writing, a lot of freelance writing. Um, so I was sort of in the wilderness. Like I wasn't. I had until I got that job at EI dot com. I was probably. I had no idea what I was going to do. Really? So no, like you I, were like fine with that, or you were? No, like, no. I was kind of like I, my dad saying, like you got to kind of figure this out. Yeah. Like you know, you're gonna. Um, my daughter was born in 07. Um, and uh, yeah, so I, mean, I was. I was until that happened. I was. I worked for Upper Deck. That that was what I was doing. I was working at Upper Deck. Um, the baseball car company. Oh, really? Yeah. So in California, for a couple of years, I was the editor uh, for type department for hockey and then for football, which means essentially I was in charge of what was on the back of the cards. So you gave me a player right now in the NHL from 2007. or two, two, I could tell you something about them. Really? Yeah. You just know all the... Like the be- like the, the best guys. Yeah. Like, uh-huh. I, I don't. I knew nothing about the NHL before or after. Yeah, but like, like... Vincent LeCavalier. Uh, yeah. I think he was number... He was Tampa, right? Yes. He was he number nineteen or no? Don't know that. Look, somebody looked that up. They had the guy number twenty six, Martin St. Louis. Yep, remember him, right winger. I think mm-hmm. he won the Hart Trophy one. Yeah, year. he was. He was St. Louis, comma, uh, tallied two goals and two assists in a six four win over the Blackhawks on January for St. Louis. Also enjoys golfing and whatever. Boom, send next player. Okay, Joe Thornton. All right, Sidney Th- Crosby, Malkin. I did. Bio after bio after bio on these guys. So you're just kind of a data entry guy. Yeah, completely. Like, and, and then I did football, which was sit. I, mean, I was making no money. Yeah, great group of guys. Like, I had fun. I had a great boss. But that's that for those couple of years. That's really what I was doing. Um, and on the side, yeah, because I was still there doing editing for EI on the side. And I remember thinking, like, I was like, if everything goes right, I was like, there's a chance I could make like seventy five thousand dollars this year. <laughs> yeah. I remember thinking that one day at my desk, yeah. like. That's pretty impressive. (laughs) Which is, I mean, you know, I'm not saying, but I'm like, you know. So, um, but I also knew Eddie, like I knew, like I knew that I could do, I I could do something. Like I knew I was a smart guy. I could make people laugh. I was, you know, I I could argue with people. I'd argue people in the office like a good way or like friends. Like I knew I was, I knew I should, I knew I should be doing something more. Yeah. Like, so it was always in my head. So when that EI thing came, like, I'm not going to sit there and be like, well, when I reached out to Rob, I thought I was going to wind up hosting the morning show, being number one. Ra- no. But I thought that was a foot in the door into that thing, which I always wanted to do. Mm-hmm. That I can say is true. So, like, for your first decade out of college, like, pretty unfulfilled? Like, Yeah. I it- mean, yeah. But, like, okay. You know, sort of figuring it out. And, yeah. Like, I would have been happy, like. You know, a, fi- a little unfulfilled, but like if I had been one day one running the type department upper deck and having five or six guys working under me, good guys, that would have been an okay life. Like that was we, fun. That was the most fun I had, like probably professionally until like this show now. Yeah, it was tough because it was just a lot of drama, but yeah, but like I was okay, mm-hmm. but I didn't know. Yeah, but like unfulfilled in terms of like 
you know, promise, sure. Yeah. I think so. You could have, you felt like you could have been doing more. I felt like it. Yeah. I mean, I didn't know. I didn't know. And when we go on a radio, like a place like EEI, these getting new spots there are, it's like moving mountains. Like you're just trying to, everyone wants, no one's leaving. Yeah. No one gets fired basically. So it was, I had to work my way. I was the lowest guy at the station when I got there. I was a part time editor for the website in 2008. Like if the highest guy at the station was the afternoon drive guy in the morning, I was. Then there was every the salespeople, the kitchen, everybody. Then me, I was. If there were 250 people. I was 250th on the on the list. And when yeah. I left, I was number one. So it was a it was an uphill climb. It was, it was quite the climb. Though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was quick too, kind it, of. It really was. So you yeah. said you were in California when that happened. Yeah. Now was this something where in, in your you're not married or anything at that time, right? I was. Yeah. You were okay. Yeah. So now, was this something where, like, you were ready to go wherever? This thing would take you. Like you were, yeah, we're on the East Coast. You know, our families were on the East Coast, and yeah. we had our daughter, so it was easy. It was moving back to Boston. Yeah, that's the thing. Is I moved back to Boston after like a year or so there, and that was part of it too. My parents wanted to, you know, be near the, the, my daughter at the time, and it was just easier. It was it was the right move, um, and I just started showing up like for weekend stuff. You know, if they need somebody to fill in the weekends, I'd go in. I would do. If they need somebody to do the the ten to twelve at night shift. I would do it. Mm -hmm. I did a lot of hours. Um, on weekends by myself where I learned how to be a, be a radio host mm -hmm. like by yourself now other people have done more but by yourself at you know you're doing post Red Sox on a Saturday afternoon from 4.30 to 7 and you monologue for 20 minutes about some baseball game terrible and you look <laughs> at the phone lines and there's not a single call and you go into the break and you're like I have to fucking do this for two and a half more hours like what am I and that's when you start think, thinking well, no one's really listening, so like, let's just fuck around a little bit. Like, I was still new, and there were program directors you could only go so far. But then I was like, well, and I and then I got pretty good at. It. And then this personality that people see now started coming out, which is the real personality. And then it was, you know, kind of off to the races. Yeah, you understood that you didn't need to go get exhaustive about Mark Bellhorn being replaced. No, right? I didn't care. Yeah, and I, <laughs> and I didn't care. Yeah. But like, I knew, I knew I had to pretend to care to get where I needed to be. Mm -hmm. So. There was a balance to it where, you know, when you host these shows by yourself and, you you know, you kind of do that thing, but you're right. It's like, you know, geez, why did uh, uh, John Farrell take out whoever in the seventh inning? Yeah. Who gives a shit? I don't know. Yeah. Um, but then if a, but then things start. I remember listening as an EEI listener, which I was. EEI is a huge, was a, was a huge station in Boston, like FAN uh, is in New York. Or here it would be, um, which I'm going to call it. Uh, here the score. Uh, six, seven, yeah, the score. Right, the score. Mm -hmm. Um I remember listening, driving around for years, and like I remember saying to my dad when I was little or younger, I'd be like, "Dad, if, if I ever did that, and some caller was this bad, I would just say, you're, you're st like you're stupid, you stink. Why are you calling?" And I started doing that weekends, and people started like kind of liking it. They were like, there were these guys who used to call all the time who felt like, remember this guy Damian Quincy would call, and he's like, he, all these shows would treat him like he was this professional caller. He stunk, and they give him like eight minutes. He make this point. The first, I was like, "You stink! Like this is stupid! Like go away! Go 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 hang out with your kids or something." <laughs> and people like that. So yeah, and then yeah, I was lucky enough to get in the morning, and then that became its own drama. So yeah. But that first fill-in shift, like right when you went live, did yeah. you feel like this is it? No, no, no. The first show, I was like, I sucked. I remember I went to Papa Gino's, a pizza place in Boston, after with the Mike Mananski, and he was very nice. But I could tell he was like, "This is not good." I, like you know, I don't have a classic radio voice, mm -hmm. um, and that was new. I didn't. I probably didn't say enough. You know, it, I, I bet if I listened to it now, it was a lot of like three word answers. He would monologue. I would say four words. He would monologue. I would say four words. So, no. But once I started doing it a lot, I was like, oh, I, I I enjoy this. Like I I, I can do this. Mm -hmm. And do you think it was that unconventional style of being not afraid to tell the callers they sucked was I that yes i mean i think it was i think it was just like conversational like these guys were always so robotic and so focused and everything as opposed to just it's you know that's the kind of thing i always liked about stern and even like in the mad dog where they would veer off and like it would be okay to you know like i i would have a producer thank god when i was doing the shows by myself now these producers mostly were couldn't speak but it was funny if they couldn't speak even then i thought it was kind of funny like i would say you know what'd you do last night Okay. Okay. Well, what's she like? Okay. Should we call her now? Like, do you want to call her? And I would get the text line. The text lines would all be like, "What? Like, what are you doing? The, the, the Patriots are playing tomorrow. Like, yeah. why are you talking? I'm like, well, you can talk. You can see that anywhere. I don't, and I would say I have nothing to add to the Patriots 
discussion you can't I'm, i don't know any more than what everybody else is talking about during the week mm -hmm. so it's interesting i would talk about it but it wasn't interesting what are you going to do? And now, is this when you were third chair with Dennis? No, Kilmer? weekends. I would okay, start. So, I started doing stuff, stuff like that toward the end and being like, I'm oh, just going to do whatever I want. Wow. So you had always done this. Yeah. We had a Mr. We had like a, because we would have random guys fill in. I became very fascinated early on by the fact that we also had flash guys who had their own on the weekends. They had their own. They were off site, like, you know, 2020 sports flash. It's yeah. like, ah, ugh. and these guys all had names that were fake because they did flashes at like six other stations so i became fascinated by that like the life of that guy was interesting to me sitting there is it, am i getting my name right i'm doing sports here i'm doing news here i'm doing he like a, this one guy's like yeah I had like a pop culture voice so we did a mr flash contest we brought them all in on the weekend and i remember the program director called me in first time ever this guy jason wolf and he's like what are you doing he's like he's like the red sox are in first place I was like, I don't know. It's funny to me. I have no idea. Yeah. He's like, we well, just don't do that again. And I was like, all right. So yeah, early on there was kind of that stuff, but all I right, was so having a good time. Now I'm having a hard time understand because if you've always been this guy, when you got into the morning show, mm -hmm. they kind of knew what they were getting, right? Kind of. Although those guys, John and Jerry didn't really know me. They liked, they liked the fact that I was prepared, like read everything and like had an opinion, but I don't think they quite knew what they were getting into. And that was walking, that show had been on, those guys have been together like 15 years. Mm -hmm. And I was like walking into like a, like a sort of a shattered marriage. They weren't getting along. I was a third guy. Jerry hated John, John hated Jerry. So there's just endless like, and I was the guy who was neutral at that point. So Jerry would leave to go to the bathroom or get something to eat. John would, you know, motherfuck Jerry. Jerry would leave, John would motherfuck. Mm -hmm. Uh, Jerry would motherfuck John. The two of them would leave. The producer would come in and motherfuck both of them. And I'm sitting there thinking, like, this is my big shot. Like, yeah. this is, you have one shot. Like, this is my, I'm in the morning. Yeah, I'm the third guy. Like, but still, this is it. Like, I, this is make or break. If I fuck this up, I'll never get a day part on radio ever again. So how do I do this? Like, how do I navigate this? And after a while, I kind of spoke more and more. To their credit, they liked it. Um, and the numbers went up. So we were losing when I came in. We were losing really bad to Toucher and Rich. And then we kind of cut into it. So by the end of that year. It's 2012. Yeah, or 13. I'm sorry. 13. My first year was 13. By the end of that year, I'd signed my first like real contract. And then after, then, you know, uh, yeah. How long was that deal? It was four years. I, but I re-signed. I was lucky. I kept, like, I signed a deal, but then the numbers went up. They gave me a new deal. I signed another deal. John left. I became the host of the show. I got a new deal. The ratings got so high when I was the host that mm -hmm. they were like, we can't, we have to give you a new deal. So the last deal I signed was crazy. My last deal I signed was crazy. It was yeah. for four years and it was one, one, two, one, four, and one, six for wow. base money. For That's base money. That's before <laughs> bonuses. What was a bonus like? What was it? Uh, it was like 50,000 for first place, 25 second, 10 third, 25 fifth for male, same for adults overall. That's per quarter. Per quarter. Yeah. So you could bang four of those out a year, <sighs> which I did one year. We did two first, two seconds. So that was 150. Um, and then we got adults as well. So I think it was like $200,000, $250,000 bonus that year. Damn, so Boston was paying these. Crazy. Payments. That was still the end of, that was like radio. That was like the very, very end, I mm -hmm. think, of big contracts. And what right did now. you get first when you were the third chair, though? Do you remember? Like, I didn't have it. Didn't We We were never first when I was the third chair. Nothing? I don't think. But no, uh, but did you, you, were, you were like, you said you're like dying. Like 75 would have been amazing. I could do this. Oh, oh yeah. That, oh, I remember that contract exactly. So I went to, it's embarrassing. I went to my dad. Because my whole life, like I've said this in my show, my whole life was like trying to make my dad proud of me. Yeah. He never said he was proud of me. He said he loved me. He was a very, he was a good guy, but he never said he was proud of me. I remember we went to him. I was like, Dad, like I'm, but uh, maybe like can you take a look at this. I had an agent, but I was like, can you take a look at this contract? I think it was like one, one twenty five, one fifty, one seventy five, which is, you know, it's a nice living. And I remember he was like, looked at, it. he was like, I could tell he was like, oh, that's you know, this is kind of starting to work out. But yeah, but I was like, holy shit, I'm gonna make you know, I'm making one hundred twenty five thousand dollars, yeah. which again is nothing to sneeze at. That's a really good living. But for me, like I was like, I will never make this kind of money again in my entire life. Like I'm never going to make this money again. Mm -hmm. How you know? So, no, but, do you know that that money's around the corner? Yeah, it got crazy. I wasn't there long. Kicked my way out and wound up here. I'm making less money, but I'm happier. <laughs> so I don't care. Like, it doesn't matter to me. And uh, what what was sorry? What was his reaction though when you saw? No, he was fine. He was good. Yeah, yeah, yeah he, he didn't give me he didn't give me what I wanted, but he was he was fine. Yeah. he was fine. He was fine. What yeah. about the big deals? Was he like? Was he? <sighs> impressed by those i'm trying to think if he was a lot and remember i didn't live out that deal so he might have died when i was negotiating i think he was very sick 16 17 i don't know i mean he knew i was making a lot of money because by there was a deal in between like 
you know, but like, it, honestly, the money was great, but it was more, you become in radio, which is so nice now. Like, I, I care about how many listeners we have, of course, and downloads and subscriptions and YouTube and all that shit, but ratings in radio back then, we were in this battle with the show Touch and Rich, where it was every week our program director would come in and say, you guys are the 14, Touch and Rich did the 12 last week. You guys did an 11, they did the 13. And then it became... Why did you guys talk about this in this quarter hour? This 15 minute block, Touch and Rich to the 15, you did 11. They talked about this, you talked about that. Oh, God. And you're sitting there saying, like, I mean, like, radio, the meter stuff is so, it's so hard to explain anyway, but you'd sit there and say, well, how the hell do I, I, I you know, I don't know. Who the fuck knows? They, you have one guy, maybe, maybe somebody who's listening went to the bathroom. I have no idea. Maybe somebody was sick that day. Mm-hmm. Hey, who the hell knows? But um, the pressure of that, I'm so glad that that's gone. Like, I want no part of that anymore. Yeah, that that has to be insane. Your whole life is like every day is like waiting for, you know, do I, you know, it means, what does it mean? Like if you finish second or first or it doesn't, but at the time you're like, I have to win, I have to win, I have to win. When you won, great. When you lost, you were devastated and then you worried about, but there was no, then the next week was the first week of the ratings book and, you know. But when you lost though, was it that like we're advertised running for the hills? Like it was like, oh, Duncan canceled. You guys are number two now. <sighs> well, Duncan did cancel once <laughs> because Jerry Callahan, my partner, got mad about something and said, we had an advertisement deal with Dunkin' Donuts. He said Munchkins were garbage. And they literally canceled, they canceled that day. You can't do that. You can't do that. You can't do that. You can't do that. And yeah. they are not. They are not uh, garbage at all. Uh, but we always had, I mean, then we had this, I mean, yeah, advertising with us was always because we battled with the Globe. I battled with Marty Walsh, the mayor boss, and I battled with the governor. I battled with Tom Brady. Mm-hmm. Like, so advertisers were always scared, always pulling and coming back. And then the thing at the end. So it was always, you can't, you know how it is like you you know you you don't it's a balance to me too like you don't want to oversell an advertiser because i think that sounds fake mm-hmm. but you also want to like you obviously aren't going to disparage one so that's always a fine line but yeah we would have advertisers come and go it was a controversial show i mean it, mm-hmm. it's what it was why was it so controversial well we did a lot of political stuff um i was like wild like i i got i got the show and like took over the show and just went to the races like i said i would fire with brady about alex carrero we fought for about alex carrero for 45 minutes on the show once um because brady would come in call in every week he was part of the deal with the patriots we had uh, marty walsh the mayor and i like i said we fought the governor hated me the boston globe hated me the red sox who we had the red sox were on our radio station um uh, this is WEI and Nessa in their combined or something? No, like that? no, they but they, know. but no, no. The okay. uh, Red Sox own Nessa and they essentially own the EI because they control them. But uh, somebody wrote a negative article about us, Jerry and I, and the Globe, and the Red Sox said we agree with a lot of it. And I went crazy. I said the Linda Pizzuti and John Henry are pandering pukes. <laughs> um, I said they're a disgusting organization, top to bottom. I hate them. People should not go to their games. They suspended me for a week. <laughs> and this is when we were number one by a lot. I thought I was going to get fired. I got suspended, I think, five times over five, four or five years. One's pretty notable. Um, and then stupid stuff. Like, I get suspended for two or three days here and there just for saying dumb shit. So, so you're like, you're Allen Iverson. You're, you're, you, there's, there's, there are problems here and there, but you're, yeah. you're a star, though. Well, you're well a, I was a star life. there for a little bit, but like, I get, I was too much. Like, I get, like, they, they fucked me over at the end, but I think they were like, look, this, like, <laughs> Everybody, like, we were going to sign a deal with the Celtics and Wick Crossback, the owner was like, I can't, like, I like Kirk, but, like, what's he going to say about me? Yeah, I love your face when I said that. Like, how are you comparing me to a six-foot point guard? <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> he was a great player. <laughs> yeah, he was but, great. Uh, uh, but I, yeah, it was, so I was so, in, like, at the same time, while all this is going on, we have this one, uh, uh, this guy, Bob Murchison, who was trying to take the station down. He was, like, a, so politically motivated. He hated me. He hated Jerry. This was like 16, 17. At the same time, both my parents were dying. They both died in the summer of 2017. So I was like, my own mental health, which is not great. Mm-hmm. Well, I was just like, you know, freaking falling apart. And then every Tuesday, Joe Zarbano would program to could roll in and be like, well, you know, uh, we love you. The touch of rich of the 13 6. We did a 13 2. He's like, maybe you should talk more sports and would say, well, how do the other shows at the station, our station do? They do like a five and a four. I'd say all they do is talk sports. Like, why would you want us to do what they do? So even talking about this now, I'm starting to tense up. I'm like, I cannot believe this is my life. Every day, this was my life. Yeah, that was it. Yeah. And you come here and it's like, you know, 
Do what you want. Yeah, I mean, like, think of all the terrible shows that are at Barstool. Yeah. <laughs> Who even knows? Yeah. Dave said he's never listened to a podcast, so. Yeah, there's no way. No chance. There's no way. I miss you and Dave together. Do you? You know that. I've told you that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were definitely a supporter. Yeah, Big you, supporter, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, you thought I was doing good. So. I, I tough spot. You did a good job. Yeah. It yeah. was. It was I, I always felt like for that show, like, I, I never... I, I was in the main character. I was just yeah, lobbing. You're setting you know up I mean? the. Like, right. That's all it was. Right. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. So everyone's like, I need Dave to be more electric and I need more. Right. Listen, if you want that, go watch a pizza review. If right. you want, you go watch right. you know, the Randolph video on the unboxing, whatever. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. To me, it was just like, this is, you'll get an hour of Dave a week and it'll be. Especially now he owns a company. I feel like it's yeah. even more crucial. If you come back, try to pitch it back to him or no? No, I, you know what? I, I miss doing stuff with Dave, but that show at the end, he was just so checked out, you yeah, know, because yeah. it is a peaks and valleys show, you know? Yeah, some weeks you have nothing. Yes. Right. Some weeks you just have nothing, and that's just right. how it is. And sometimes, like, and, and I look back, I'm like, what's happened this year that's been big? Like, obviously, like the Mean Girl stuff, like the Rico stuff, like buying those the big, company. Yes, buying the company <laughs> yeah. back, obviously. Even the surviving thing. the last couple of weeks. Surviving, yeah. yeah like, right. there's big stuff where it's like, man, that tent pole thing would have been great to. But then you forget the weeks where it's yeah. like, by middle of March. Nothing. Yes. Yeah, and yeah. you're just like, wow, I'm really really right. scratching right you know, so it's crazy though with dave now like i'm not saying anything new but like my daughter's 16 and she and her friends like know dave because of the pizza stuff they just they just know like you go out with him i was in i was at that writer cup thing mm -hmm. and i was he's like do you want to come along for a pizza review so i went with him in austin and i think jerry and i went to watch a pizza review it was like it was actually fascinating to watch like to see the guy who owned this little pizza place see dave come in and like and like the workers and everyone's like it's a it's a very like he's way more famous for that oh yeah way more mm -hmm. than for this for sure like 50 times more famous yeah, yeah. Which, i mean everyone likes pizza right it's true everyone it's likes true. pizza it was, it, was, it was a genius thing to do so. it's true and he started coming on our show he was on ei that's where he did the he got kicked off with the brady's kids dick thing mm -hmm. that was before my time i met him in like 13 or 14 at the super bowl we kind of stayed in touch a little bit. And then I, once I got the morning show, I was like, well, I want to bring him back. Let's mm -hmm. start. And he, and he came in fairly regularly, Dave. He would do, he probably on like eight, seven, eight times a year for all four hours. He would do four, six in the morning, he'd come in and do the show with us. And you guys always had a pretty good relationship. Always had a right? good relationship. Yeah, I always loved Dave. Because I know he always, him and Felger and Maz were kind of. Yeah, hit or miss. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I always got along. Jerry got along great with him. Um, and when things were getting bad, for me, something happened. He tweeted something out. He's like, you always have a job. I won't say where, but it rhymes with bar, whatever. And I started texting him then. So I knew I was going to wind up here mm -hmm. for sure. Like once the morning show started really having all those problems, battling and stuff, I, kinda, I like didn't want to go anywhere else. So yeah. I knew I was, I wouldn't want to do radio ever again. So I was like, I want I wanted to do a podcast. So I was going to do this. So really it was like a four year run with the EI? Well, I was at EI from 13 to like the end of 18. End of 18. 12. Yeah, and yeah. yeah, I mean, counting weekends like eight or nine years, but like, yeah, mornings like about just under six years. Yeah. yeah. And that, I mean, what was it like after it ended? Like, were you kind of. It's very weird because, you know, like I said, we were number one. The last two years, we were probably number one, six of the eight books, you know, number one morning show in Boston. Um, huge ratings. Um, but there was so much, like, sweet battled so many people. And then EI, EI then wanted me out. So I took a mental health leave in the summer of 18. Um, I went to a mental, uh, uh, to an inpatient facility um, and came back uh, for a little bit, then took a break. I was like, this isn't working for me. So I took a break, went on uh, FEMA, uh, uh, not FEMA, Family Medical Leave Act, whatever, yeah. So I was out for a while and they said whenever you want to come back come back but they had somebody in there this guy Mike Manansky who's on my show now very nice guy but it's like a Mike Greenberg type like a Mike like a sort of poor man's Mike Greenberg so he was doing the show with uh, I'm just saying that because he's going to hear this and get so mad <laughs> that's literally the other, I'm just picturing him listening to this right now in this car yeah. uh, so they did the show but they could control those guys they, like, they were saying advertisers are mad Red Sox are mad Patriots are mad just talk sports so I tried to come back and they're like, eh, we don't take your time, take your time, take your time. So eventually, like, we just said, this isn't going to work. Um, and I wound up leaving. But yeah, once I left the show, it was very strange. When I left EI, like I said, we had this bullshit thing where they're going to have me do a podcast once I left EI at, for Entercom, the old company. That never was going to work. But like, forced my way out. I went to a Barnes and Noble 
and uh, what was the old thing? People we used to do videos on Twitter. The, Periscope. Periscope. Yep. I did Periscope from Barnes and Noble, and said, "You have 24 hours, or I'm going to go nuclear on you guys." And I think I was on the floor at Barnes and Noble at one point, like saying, "This is how low the ratings are DEI without me." Like I went down to show how low it was. I was like rolling around the ground, <laughs> <laughs> and then we up talking to them that day. Like I said, gone. And then I called Dave. We negotiated the contract. Talked to Erica. Great. Dave tweeted out as part of Barstool, and I think I started with Steve two weeks later, three weeks later, maybe. Were, were you, what kind of place were you? Would you say you were in a bad place after? Well, the year know? before, I, yeah, well, yeah. My ment- mentally, I'm just always, you know, I go up, I go down, I go up, yeah. I go down. But yeah, I was uh, definitely suicidal. Like I said, I went away. Um, but it, that that was part of the stress of work, part of the my parents, you know, just, just life. Um, because I, I do remember you. I, I don't know if you remember this one. I remember you doing a periscope of you eating Chipotle at the Super Bowl. Yeah, by myself. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I was. Uh, so that was. So that was. That was. Uh, so that was the next year. So I left the morning show, and then there comes. So we don't want to lose you. We're going to start this thing called Radio.com, an app. We want you to be the centerpiece of this thing. This is going to be edgy, and I'm like, all right, I'll try it. I'm like it's a shitload. They're, they didn't cut my salary at all. I said I'll do it, as long as you because. They're like, we're not, cut your, we're not going to cut your salary. I said, but what about my bonuses? They said, we'll guarantee you all your bonuses, even though bonuses don't count. We'll just throw it in. I said, great. They're going to pay me a fortune. And they just benched me. I didn't do anything. They were never going to do a show, but they didn't want me to leave. I think they thought maybe I'd go to another station. No shit. They were I, just keeping you under the compete yeah, kind yeah. of. They would do this. Yeah. So I was, doing huh. pod, I was doing podcasts by myself in a producer's booth in a different part of the building because they didn't want me at EEI. So I would just interview people. Like Dave was on. I the first time I ever spoke to Riggs, which was as boring as it is to this day. Like you know, a ter- usual terrible Riggs conversation. I remember that. <laughs> uh, so, um, uh, so they said, "Yeah, we'll send you down the Super Bowl for Radio.com. Well, you know, maybe you can you know bring your Periscope and do whatever." So I went down there, and there's the old show, my old show. The guys are there. These are my best friends, but we're mm-hmm. now we hate each other, kind of. Well, I was a pain in the ass. And so at night, they'd all go out to eat. And like, yeah, I remember, I remember that night. It's funny you said that. I, I had Chipotle. And I was just sitting there like, look at the comments. Like, yeah, I don't know. You, when, when are you going to do this show? I have no idea. Do you hate Jerry? Yeah, I guess. Like, yeah. <laughs> just, just, it was like the worst ASMR ever. I don't know if you could ever find that, but I was like entranced. Oh, really? Yes. I, I don't, and I don't know why. I don't, we, yeah, day. we didn't know each other. No, I didn't right. know you at all. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. just, I, I remember. So you first came on my radar was the whole Aaron Andrews thing. Sure. That's where, and I like, it's, you know, the whole yeah, yeah. radio and everything. And yeah. I obviously knew Felger and Maz and I was like, Oh, this guy's, he's a third chair. Cause how soon was Dennis that into Callahan. your, how, yeah. But how, how soon was that into your third chair with that? Show? Aaron Andrews. Yeah. That whole controversy. That was the summer of 2014. It was the perfect timing as usual. So the, uh, uh, all-star game was that night. Who's the old Cardinals pitcher, Adam Wainwright. Yeah. He proved the pitch for, uh, uh, She's Jeter, for Jeter, and she interviewed him, and she was like about the thing, and about and then she's like, "Don't you hate social media or something?" Aaron Andrews like sarcastically. We came back on to us. It was during like a flash something, and I was like, "What a bitch! What a gutless bitch! So dumb! Like just beyond, like beyond." I've, I've, I mean, I've apologized. It's beyond stupid, stupidest thing I've ever done. Um, really, that you would genuinely say that? Well, I knew when I said it, I was like, "This, like, what? Why am I like? I don't think she's like." You know, nothing new. All silent reporters are useless. Like, why am I? That was one of those things where I, was, I think I felt like I was trying too hard to be like, oh, you know what I mean? Like, it just felt yeah. you know, like even I, but they loved it, of course, because and then they the fucking they replayed it at nine o'clock. And I remember going down the stairs the way we were on the second floor. It's kind of like here. You go down the stairs and out the door and then you go to your car. Mm-hmm. And we're going down the stairs and getting a text from Mutt saying, just so you know, awful announcing is writing about this, is written about the Aaron Andrews thing. You calling her a bitch. And I was like, oh, here we fucking go. Mm-hmm. And then it was everywhere because that day is the one day of the year where there's nothing else going on in sports. So it just became like this thing. And I'm getting, sus- I didn't get suspended initially. <laughs> they were afraid because they, they, all the people like the show were tweeting the EI, don't suspend them, don't suspend them. So they didn't suspend me. They wanted to come back and apologize. I apologize. My apology got me suspended. Because I said if she weighed 20 pounds more, she'd be a waitress. And she stinks at her job. Mm-hmm. Stupid again. So then they were like, we got to fucking suspend this guy. So I think I got suspended for two weeks for that. Enough. Which was, you know, whatever. But yeah. Th- yeah. But that's that's when I first became friends with Dan, too. He, because when I came back, 
I made a list of everybody, like Richard Nixon. I made a list of all the enemies, people who went after me during this. And Dan, I think on an episode of Part of My Take or something, kind of was like, why did this guy do this? And I was like, who? I didn't even know they were. I was like, what is this stupid podcast? Like, fuck these guys. He messaged right away. I was like, hey, listen, like, we don't know each other. Like, you know, this guy. And then we were friends. But yeah, yeah, that was definitely... That was for a couple of days. I was like, I'm going to get fired. And then yeah. I'd be dead. Like, you don't come back from that. Like, the guy who called, you know, like, you're just branded forever. Was there anything from her after that? No, no. I mean, like, and Norton, I mean, she should. I mean, she could have said whatever she wanted, of course. It was stupid. Totally stupid. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was a big thing. Huge. I remember that. Huge, for me, huge. Like, just yeah. massive. Yeah. But in, like, in a weird way, like it said, like, for me, like, it. Got me through. Once you got through the fire, it's, like, oddly a. I hate to say good, but like it was like a strike sound effect thing, you know? Like yeah, it's it was like, like a notoriety. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like weird, because I was like, oh, all right, that, that, and that's how I knew you. And then after that, you know, I, like just following the radio world and stuff, that's when I saw that, you know, you parted ways yep. over everything, and I was like, I'm watching this guy's periscopes and yeah. Dave. I was like, man, this is, yeah, this is, <laughs> this is reality. I remember you know? doing that periscope thing. I was sick that week too. I remember I was sick at the end of the week, and I remember thinking, what the fuck? I was in that hotel. This Boston Magazine was doing this big profile on me, which wound up being a hit piece. And like I was talking to that guy at night, a bunch for that story. And yeah, I was eating by myself all the time. I was like, what the fuck am I doing? Like, why am I? I'm not happy at this company. What the fuck am I doing? It's funny you said that because that was one of those moments. I was like, why am I here? I was like, I can go somewhere else and probably be happier. Mm-hmm. So, was money ever a big issue? For Barstool, like, like no, for you, like, like how being like, I if I, I need this job, like I need to. No, not really, but like, no, but it was nice. It was a great yeah. part of it. I mean, as it is now, I make a great, make a great living. So I, I would never, uh, uh, you know, I, I no issue. But no, it was more. It was some of like, can I walk away from making this kind? Like this is mm-hmm. crazy. Like, like I never thought I was gonna make any money at all. Like, can I? Can I walk away and come to Barstool and make less? Like, I look, I make less. I make a great living, but I don't make as much as I did. Mm-hmm. Um, so you're still financially stable through all this? Now? No, no, no. Through, oh, through yeah. all, like, initially. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah, I yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? I'm pretty cheap. Like, I am not. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of a, you know. No frills kind of guy. Yeah, yeah. I might have a nice car and stuff, but I'm not like, I don't know. I don't spend a lot of money. Yeah. I probably should as I get older, but I don't. Mm-hmm. And, I, I mean, going back to everything too if you don't mind me asking that's what you want it's a, a big thing about stern is yeah. you know he had that big bombastic personality when he was really getting after it mm-hmm. a lot of people thought that was like a big like f you to his dad who told him he couldn't do it right do you think you had any of that uh yeah for sure no for sure eddie i go to a shrink they're going to same shrink for like 35 years and all we talk about is my dad still he's been mm-hmm. dead for seven years almost a little bit yeah i think there was some of that and we're like, like when you got on the mic you were like this is like i'm gonna fucking i'm gonna this is it i'm the guy probably yeah i think so i think so and i yeah yes for sure um and i liked and this part of me that always liked when like the globe or somebody would go after us because then we had an enemy like it's no fun without an enemy because then you're just sitting there it's like you said about david there's nothing going on you're kind of yeah. like well all right, what's going on in the Eastern Conference? Where it's like, I don't really care. So, yeah, yeah but uh, yeah, for sure. And like, you know, my dad was great. But yeah, there was sort of that, that sort of like, yeah, you, you're listening now, you're paying. And my dad was funny, though, because he would be like, he would listen to the show, but he would always be like, ah, you shouldn't have said that, or that's too, why are you doing that? Or why are you talking about this? You know, because like, I, you, you do things on radio that like people weren't doing at that point. Starting to way crazier things. But mm-hmm. you know, I remember we'd, we'd do this thing once in a while and like, everyone get all skittish where I would go to tube galore and just read the different categories and pornography and in radio it's like here who gives a shit like we would literally play it and laugh at it but on radio everyone's like what the fuck are you talking about <laughs> right, like, you can't the fire say pissing yeah like it's like well why not like you know you can't yeah. and every once in a while like the producers I just to make sure they were paying attention I'd be like I'll tell you I was like this is just fucking bullshit mm-hmm. and just see if they're just because like just to goof around because you just get bored radio is so regimented that it's just like you know, it was 15 minutes break, 15 minutes mm-hmm. break, 15 minutes break, so. Mm-hmm. And yeah. so he would kind of like nitpick your shows a little bit? A little bit, yeah. I mean, not not like, it was fine, but it was more like, yeah. I think it, I think he was always nervous, especially because I got in a lot of trouble. Like, I think he was always worried that I was going to blow it, which, by the way, I did. Like, I kicked my way out of that place. Like, I could I could still be there today if, it, I wouldn't want to be, but if they if I had followed their rules and done six or eight things, but I didn't want to do that. Mm-hmm. I just didn't, I just did not want to do that. Hey, real quick, got to take a second here to talk about our guys at Roback. You guys know Roback supplies a whole office 
Um, we love it. We really do love it. Trust me when I say that like I'm all set for buying my gifts for the family. So is everybody here in the Barcelona Chicago office because Roback is simply the gear that uh, has the best fit, best feel, and just all around the best. They got the performance hoodies. They're the most comfortable hoodies out there. They're the best way to start your day, and uh, they're so soft you'll want to wear them commando. That's true. Like like just skin on Roback sweatshirt is is money. It really is. Uh, they got the performance crew knock, same feeling, and uh, they have the new fleece pullovers which are comfortable and they look great so perfect for a chilly day or a night out beyond comfortable the best thing about Roback is when you see that little dog logo or you see those two stripes on the back you just know it's a Roback guy you just kind of nod at him you say how we doing and you know what they're about so get in on the action use code dog on roback.com for 20 percent off now for all new customers through the end of this week that's spelled r-h-o-b-a-c-k.com that's 20 percent off all hoodies joggers and polos with code dog it's now holiday season so don't be late this year and be sure to check them out at roback.com all right what do, what do you think goes through these guys' heads when they're like, let's... Program directors? Yeah. Fear they're going to lose their job. Mm -hmm. Like, for them to say, hey, Kirk, like, you know, can you do us a favor and, like, you know, not say that, you know, whoever, the owner of the Red Sox who pays us, you know, we pay money, we have a relationship with, can you please just, like, not suggest that maybe he's married to a much younger woman for, you know, bullshit reasons or, or that the organization's a bunch of phonies or, you know, whatever. Or, hey... Kirk, you know, we asked you not to talk about this subject. Why did you talk about it? Why did you talk about us asking you not to talk about it? Like downstairs earlier today, Stephen Shea was talking to me. He said, I appreciate if you don't bring something up tomorrow night. And he said it. Well, I'm going to bring that up, you know. So, <laughs> yeah, like it's, you know, Stephen Shea would have been a great program director. <laughs> Born to be a program director. Yeah. Well, he got in trouble on uh, the show I did with Dave because of uh, some type of an ad situation where yes. he, and it was the hey, buddy, for people that listened early on, they, they know that. Right. Fiasco. But you're yeah. right. Well, he used to, the first time I met Shay was he got, he sent an email to Steve. He's like, hey, just so you know, Kirk, this is a total program director thing. Kirk's read for, I don't know, Simply Safe was 54 seconds, supposed to be 60 seconds. <laughs> Nothing makes me crazier than that. <laughs> Nothing. So I didn't even know he was. He was, a, he, it's, his title was Traffic. So I kept saying, uh, I would like for him to play in traffic. <laughs> As you just saw me say them again downstairs earlier again. My wishes for Steve Shea to die in a car crash. <laughs> but um, uh, uh, but Shea is like the perfect like robot, like perfect for radio. And these guys, it, like that's the one thing that like movies, like these bits get right. Like like Paul Giamatti playing him was perfect because they're like that. They think, okay, well, you know, why don't we do a bit? Like why don't we do a part of the show where we are purposely wacky and we'll call it something. It's mm -hmm. like, well, why can't we just talk? Like you and I are talking. Why? Why do yeah. people? You know, and I, I I don't listen to sports radio anymore. Maybe it's gotten better. I doubt it. My guess is it's gotten worse because, you know, people are now scared for their jobs because the the industry is dying, which is sad. I love radio, but the industry is slowly dying. Guys our age, well, you're younger than me, even. But how old are you now? I'm 33. Right. Well, you know, the kids who are like my daughter's 16, my son's 11. They don't even know what AM and FM is. They have no idea. There's no. So what do they plug in when they get in a car? Like what is it? What is it? They have it on like they have it on iTunes or YouTube or yeah. like they serious. Not even that, but like mm -hmm. they know what serious is. Bad Bunny, right? A Bad Bunny or whoever. <laughs> My son likes Boy with Uke, who's a YouTube like singer. You know who has like four like he's like all these other YouTube shows. He has four million followers yeah. or whatever. So. They wouldn't even know what they know what EI is because their dad used to work there, but they yeah. don't know what it is. There's no. something very funny about that, like your, your son listening to something like that, knowing how much of a Bruce Springsteen fan you are. Yeah, <laughs> just the difference of that. So I took him to see Bruce finally. Yeah, I, I took him to see Bruce in September. I was like, I'm taking my son to see Bruce Springsteen once. Just he hates Bruce. So he hates him. Hates him. Hates him because his dad likes him. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Tail is old this time. Yes. So I bring him. And we get these great seats. And we're talking before the show with Jonathan Kraft, who's a nice guy, listens to the podcast, good guy. I've known him forever now. And he's like, hey, I brought my son to Bruce uh, years ago. He's about your age. He's like, you must be excited. He's like, actually, you know, Mr. Kraft, to be honest with you, I hate Bruce Springsteen. <laughs> yeah, Jonathan <laughs> Kraft's like, well, I invited him here, so I don't know. But uh, uh, so I took him to see Boy With Uke the next week at like a club in Boston. It's like all these 12-year-old kids, like their heads are bad. It was very funny. And we left the show. I was like, like, what'd you think? Because Harry did at least admit that Bruce like tried harder as a good performer. He's like, Dad, he's like, I like Boy With You better. He's like, his, his show is way shorter. And he's like, he sings exactly like it sounds on YouTube because he was lip syncing the whole time. <laughs> so I was like, well, there you go. There you go. 
<laughs> that's nuts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's funny. It's good. Like you shouldn't. Your kids shouldn't like the same music you like. Generally, you know. But as they get older, then they maybe they will. Yeah, it's gonna be different for sure. Yeah. Does he want to get into the business or anything? He does. He wants to. He said when I die, he wants to take over the podcast. Wow. Yeah. It's a heavy, heavy crown. Heavy crown. I, well, I just signed a few months ago, so I'm signed through 2027. So I always say I'm gonna retire, but I'm like, I like this. Like, yeah. I co- totally control my schedule. We do four shows a week. Like I do whatever, you know, I go if I want to do it late, if I want to do it on a weekend night, if I want to do it on a weekday night, if I want to do whatever, yeah. I do the case. And then like, you know, I think they like having me at these like things, like yeah. surviving and Ryder Cup. So like, it's a great gig. Yeah. You know, and I have fun. I, I, like I, the, the people are high up at the company. I get along great with almost all of them, you know, so. Everybody the company basically now. Yeah, that's true. It's a lot it's you know, a lot different. We got rid of all of them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. how much was Steve part of that like uh Minahan world versus the Barstool world? Was he like you guys were kind of in the trenches with that? That was kind of a me. I mean, like uh, yeah, I mean I definitely was leading that. But it was more that idiot uh who's the guy who pretends he was in the military, the bald guy there. Chaps. He uh stolen valor chaps, I call him. Never served a day, Eddie. <laughs> He uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, he tried to get Steve fired at the start uh, over that Albright thing, which he's apologized for because mm-hmm. you know. Uh, so that was a war. Obviously, K. Marco, Ellie yeah. Schnitt, like the 2020. We'll just say that the people at Barstool, a lot of people, should look in the mirror how they handle themselves like during that whole thing. Mm-hmm. Well, an awful thing that happened in this country. Like people lost their fucking minds at this yeah. company for a couple of months. Like it was wild. It's wild. And then did you eventually get to a point where you're like, "Whoa, it doesn't need to be." You're you were used to battling, you know, like how whatever, you know. Sure, but I mean, look if it, if it, something happened now, I'd be like, "Let's go." Like I'm I'm always down for it. But like people have kind, of, I think people are now are like, "I don't even want to get near this fucking guy." Like I don't want to get near these fucking fans. Like I want no part of it. Yeah, I, I do. They're think, crazy. Yeah, I mean, people don't want the smoke at all. They don't want them in the fans. Yes, they don't need that. They don't they need don't. that. But I do wonder how that is from your perspective like don't you, you like do, can you tell when people are kind of hobnobbing you i see here yeah i see here today yeah i i see people doing that to you, you see with me yes i yeah. see people doing that to yeah. you. and i'm like listen obviously you're you're, you're a nice guy over it. people like you we get along great because yeah. Of that yeah. yeah but like i see the hobnob and i'm like i kirk is smarter than that he knows what you're doing yeah sure but i think it's kind of funny though <laughs> yeah it's funny though i mean like yeah. i don't really know like i, I, I was saying this megan making money uh, who still works for the company for some reason? Who the hell knows why? For some reason, who she? I think she just like showed up here in Chicago. I think anybody knows what she's doing here. I like her, but she came over today, and I felt a little bit of that, where I was kind of like, "What's? Like, I'm. I don't hate you. Like everything's good. Like mm-hmm. don't don't worry. Like it, I see people doing that. And I'm kind of like, because it's not the men of fans by and large have a pretty good sense of humor about stuff. Mm-hmm. Like they're pretty good. But now when somebody tries to fuck us over, like like. K. Marco did. That's a different situation. Yeah, but like stuff that's kind of funny, like you know, it's fine. But that's got to be such a change to get getting hobnob to from what you went from before, where everyone couldn't well, wait for you to get yeah. out of the building. People you know? would still kiss your ass your face then. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I imagine the same people who are hobnobbing or motherfucking me behind my back. But that's what people do at places like this. Everybody gossips, you know. Mm-hmm. Everybody's doing their thing. So yeah, but I, I mean, but like I like. I don't know, 95% of the people at the company, I think. I mean, I, there's nobody here I really actively dislike that I, that I see like that are, that's here today. I get along with everybody because, you know, I mean, yeah, I think most people get it. Like it's, you know, even like Megan, I'm kidding around. Like there's a there's a joking element to it. Yeah. But I think people are just like, do I want 70 tweets like today? Like probably not. Mm-hmm. Even if they're kidding around. Like I get that. I do understand that. Is it like a stern thing back to like retiring? Like is it like, a, you know how he always said? like Always, uh, yeah. Is he, he stopped doing that or no? I, I don't I don't listen anymore. I haven't so listened really so long. It sucks. Yeah. Yeah. Did you listen to any of the Rolf stuff or no? I listened, I saw the clips. Yeah, I thought it was yeah. pretty nice. Yeah, I thought yeah. he did a good job. It seems like, he, yeah, he's really hurt. Yeah, obviously. Sure. Yeah, no, I, I like I always think this time I was like 50-50 for a few months. But then I started thinking, like, the fuck am I going to do all day? Mm-hmm. Like, what the fuck am I going to do all day? Like, do you have any idea what you would do? None. None. No. I'm always like, oh, I'll do this. I'll do that. But, like, I don't know. Like, I mean, I still feel like the show's good. Really good. And, you know, and so and I enjoy doing it. Like, you know, we do a bunch of live shows now. And, like, and I just like working for this company. And I'll tell you, I got a couple of things happen. One, Dave bought the company, which kind of. I think reinvigorate everybody. Yeah. For me, it did for sure. 
The second thing is I was close to signing a new deal. It was basically done. And I did this live show in Plymouth. A couple of thousand people there. It was the colony fucked it up. The sound was a disaster. <laughs> but at the end of it, I was like, just so you guys know, you're the first ones to know, I'm, I've signed a new deal with Barstool Sports. And I thought people would be like, oh, great. Because I've always teased about, like, I'm not kidding. I was stunned by this. The place went fucking crazy. I saw, I remember Whitney was there. He tweeted out that night. Like, the place went nuts. Yeah. And that really, like, touched me. I was like, oh, shit. Like, when I see people, you know, where I'm on the streets or at these things and people are like, the show means a lot to me. Like, as I've gotten older, I do appreciate that. My old reaction would be like, fuck you. But now I'm kind of like, this is kind of, we're sort of in this together, you know? Like, mm -hmm. my show is a lot. Like, it's, you can't, if anybody's listening to this now who's never listened to the show before, honestly, don't waste your time. Like, you're fine. You, listen to it. Like, it's just, it's too much work. Like, there's a lot of other great podcasts. Go, go <laughs> knock it. Like, it's just too much work. It's just too much work. What, to get caught up? Yeah. Like, it's a whole, don't, yeah, you're good. But it's a true show. You yeah, it's one I mean? of the last ones, I think. Yes, it's a true yeah. show. Where yeah. there's the, the, the community's involved. And, right. And, and the producers are involved. Yeah, char yeah. There's, characters. There's wrap-up shows. And, you know, and the like recap show. A million you know? wrap-up shows and parody accounts and this and that. And, but, like, I would tell people to run away. Then it's, I mean, it's just, it's, it's just don't do it. Don't do it. Is it ever too much with, with, with them? No, they're, they're good now. They've gotten better. The Minna fans? Yeah. No, they're good. Like, yeah. you know, it was a lot at the beginning because they smelled blood and there was a war and they were so wounded, like, as listeners, the ones who came from EI. And then they were like, oh, shit. Like, D Dave was going to fire Steve Robinson over this thing. And I was like, and I was threatening to quit. I was like, I. And then something happened in 2020 that was my fault where we were battling with Barstool over the K Marco thing. And we, in the. Barstool had the. Uh, <laughs> I know <laughs> this is gonna be. <laughs> Dave will mention this to me sometime in the next twenty four hours because he never doesn't mention it to me. Um, they were having the uh, what you might call it the uh, sales sales <laughs> all the new clients and all the new you know the pitches. There's a name for it. I'm forgetting the name of it. Um, upfronts. Upfronts. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Upfronts. And somebody found out the password to get in or whatever it was, and I gave it on the show. <laughs> And I didn't give him any commands, but I did enough. And uh, and Dave, I remember exactly where I was. I was going to lunch, and Dave called me. He's like, I have to fire you. He's like, you can't do this. And I was like, yeah. I was like, this was really stupid. He's like, I have to fire you. He was like, I don't want to fire you. It was funny because I was texting Erica. Erica texted me. She's like, hey, I'm so sorry it ended this way. Like, you know, I've got your back in the future, whatever you do after this. And I'm like, and then Dave's calling me while I'm looking at this text. <laughs> And after like 90 seconds, going back and forth, not even like combative. Like I was like, I get it. I was like, just so you know, I was like, I got it. I'll never do it again. He's like, all right. And I was back. But I mean, that was pretty, that was pretty that dumb. Was, that was pretty dumb. And he, so you said that the Aaron thing is dumb. So is that? That like, was dumber in a lot of ways that because I was older. Yeah. And like, I was battling with K. I wasn't battling with Dave. I wasn't battling with the company. Like that's, I, and I think the way I did it was not like that clear. Like here's a password, get in. There was something. Like, there was something. If you did something, then something. But the men of the fans could. I'm sure somebody could have done it. They yeah. didn't. Um, but that was like reckless and like. But and this is during the pandemic. Like it was just fucking stupid. Mm -hmm. Stupid. But like Dave says, like you hire crazy guys and do crazy things. So. And it's it's significantly cooled since then. Like now you're kind of. Yeah, I mean, I get. I mean, I couldn't get along better with Dave. I mean, yeah, but but even then, like we've, I've never had a, we've like yelled at each other in content, but like, as a, like you can't ask for, you cannot ask for a better boss. Like I mm -hmm. hate saying it sometimes because it's, but even this thing that happened during Surviving mm -hmm. with the YouTube thing, yeah, that was because of something I said uh, to Jeff D. Lowe. I threatened to blow up his his mother's house, not his father because his father's dead. His father was humiliated. He already knew beforehand how bad Jeff was going to do with surviving. He, he <laughs> willed cancer in his body. It's true. He called me. He asked me how because my parents had died from it. I helped him out. I'm like Jack Kevorkian. Uh, uh, but David is supposed to be. Now, here's what's interesting is like, I'm happy to take the blame, but like, is that my fault? I said something in content that got edited and seen. Like, blaming me for that feels like a stretch, right? Mm -hmm. Like, this was recorded. But Dave, to his credit, was like, fuck YouTube. Like, that, you know, we're, this is what we do. Whereas if that happened at EI, some version of that, everybody would blame me. Like, the shitstorm would have been unbelievable. I had Dave on the show the next day, and I told him, I was like, I can't tell you how grateful. He hates hearing stuff like this, but I'm like, I'm just really grateful to work for somebody who has my back like that. And he's always had my back in situations like that. So, you know, there's been times where 
dumb shit has been said and you know he'll always have your back because he he gets that part of it great i mean and it's great that he doesn't listen to a fucking thing i say like, yeah it's like freeing i'm like <laughs> eric nardini i'm sure has never listened to a second of my show uh dave has said he's never listened to a podcast in his life so who am i like who's gonna who am i worried about fucking gaz cares about him like you know it's like just you're kind of doing it for yourself yeah which is great I mean, yeah. I, don't know, I don't know if you have a different. I'm sure you have the same experience. No, no, totally. Yeah. Like they don't, you know. It, it's it, it's it's literally on you. Like you know, you're gonna sink, you're gonna swim. Right. Like it's yeah. That's it. People yeah. are gonna tune in or they're not. You know. Right. Like and I, yeah, and I don't really even. I know they're happy with the numbers. So I, as long as they say that, I'm like, good. I don't, you know, long form podcasts. I think are have peaked. If I'm probably being honest, right? I mean, like that's what they you, said too. They said audio all around the board is just down or yeah. flat. I mean, I know my kids. It's just like flip up TikTok, youtube shorts like three minutes you know yeah. more way more people are going to watch jersey jerry try and hit a fucking thing than was some of which is great i love jerry yeah. but that's just the way the world i'm not built for like 30 second video clips like, did they ever try to do that with you like hey uh, kirk we need you to lean more into TikTok and whatnot no they don't bother no they know i think they yeah, that's a nice spot to nobody be <laughs> yeah i think everybody's like if they, I think somebody's probably like, Dave would never ask me that. Like, yeah. if he did, I would do it. But like, like I do a thing now on the show. It's a joke. Like, I turn my hat around backwards and do a top ten thing, and so Coleman will put it on TikTok from the show account. But our show TikTok account probably has three hundred. Like, I don't even. I have no. It's so bad. <laughs> yeah. And I, but like, I, I'm not. I'm. I don't have a TikTok account, so mm -hmm. I don't have an Instagram account. But yeah, that's like you said. It's a weird thought when that's the future of content. And I guess you're in a position where. You don't have to worry about it, right? No, if I was 33, I'd worry about exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. So that's where I'm it's lucky. like, I'm, I'm very yeah. much like you. Yeah. I'm, I'm 33, but I'm an older soul right. kind of guy, right. you know? So that's why it's like, fuck, you know, I got to, you know, get into this thing and do a dance. I got to do whatever. So it's kind of, it is kind of daunting in that respect for sure. Yeah. And I just don't know. I just don't know how it translates. Like, you know, um, like the Mean Girls would do a thing where they would be like, hey, like, you know, do a, like nobody listened to their podcast, I don't think really, but they would do a clip where would be like, geez, I wonder what it would be like if like you sat in my face and like, and then like I, you know, I went down on you or something and like 900,000 people would watch it or too many people, fine, great. And I, I like Alex, so I was happy with dinosaurs are, are still on the earth or something. But then they would do a live show and like 10 people would show up. So I don't know, I just don't know, I can do a live show with a couple of thousand people or like, I don't know the value of, if one's more valuable than the other. My guess is probably, Two million views on TikTok is more valuable. That's probably just the reality of where because smart people are are telling me that now, so they're probably right. But that's a huge question, right? Is is your podcast doing you know whatever eighty thousand downloads? Right. Is that like what does that translate would, to? I don't. Know. Yeah, but you would think like it's people who show up and they're there all the time and are attentive and care about you and want to know yeah. how the story ends. Brand loyalty, than, I think, still matters for yeah, sure. Yeah, then different yeah. than scrolling and being like, all right, yeah, sure, they may have got a million versus like eighty thousand. But who are they? Right. Yes, yeah. like what? Then right. that's where. Well, I think the company, I think Barstool now is run by people who care more about that. Yes, and and by the way, these are smart people and they have numbers yeah. and data and money. I'm sure they're probably right. Yeah, but I'm not. My audience would vomit if I actually started doing that. Sincerely, started doing TikTok stuff. Or, mm -hmm. Like it just wouldn't. They would smell the bullshit. So yeah, and I just don't really have a lot of interest in it. Like yeah. I'm just going to do what I'm interested in. So yeah, that's a crazy thought though. That that's what I I, I don't know. I we guess. did a video. Um, we had like 20 million, million people watch this video of me and Francis. Uh, oh, the uh, golf thing. Four versus five thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 20 million people. It was mm -hmm. like a minute long clip. Way more people, obviously, than will ever listen to everything I ever do put together times 50. Watched one 50 second clip where Francis cheated playing golf and I called him out on it. So, I mean, like, I don't know. Like, it's just who the hell knows? I, you know, I, yeah. Is that what is that clip worth for foreplay? Is it worth seven dollars? Is it worth seven? I have no idea. I don't know how that yeah. stuff works. How, how different is the Kirk when the mics are off versus when they're on? I mean, it depends. I, sometimes I'm pretty amplified when the mics are off, but I'm pretty quiet. I mean, you've been around me a little bit. I'm a pretty quiet guy. Yeah. I'm not like a lot. You know, you go around here and like, you know, you know, White Sox Dave and Enrico will be here tomorrow. I mean, there are guys, uh, who's a new guy? Nikki. Uh, Nikki Smokes. Yeah. Like these yeah. guys are on. Yeah. And it's like, I'm not, you know, I'm not built like that. I'm a quiet sort of like tonight. You asked what I was doing tonight before the show. So what's about five o'clock now? So we'll do this for as long as you want. So when I'm done with this, I'll see what if they need me for anything else. I will go to my hotel. I will find something to eat. I will eat by myself. 
<laughs> and then I'll be hopefully the lights will be off at like eight forty five. That's it. Quiet. Yeah, because I don't like And you wake up, you go on your run. Go my run tomorrow what and I'll come in here at? early. I get up early tomorrow, probably six, six thirty. Well, what time does it get a light here? Uh a little yeah. early. Yeah. Okay. Go yeah. my run, come back, I'll go and do whatever run down the mile, I don't know, whatever they need me to do. I have the surviving finale. When is when is this on? This will air Thursday. So Thursday. Surviving is done. Yeah, surviving's okay. done. Mm-hmm. Okay. I yeah. won, just so you know. Did you? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I'll know. tell you, we were talking about this before. You won once. I did. I won season two. You won season two. You had a great speech, which I watched. Yeah, thank you. I think about surviving. I will think about that tonight when the lights go out. I think about surviving bars to the things I could have done right. Really? All the time. No shit. All, I text Kevin, Hank, uh, Rico, all, every day, Jeff, every day about this that's one thing about this company too is i have a lot i actually have a lot of good friends at the company which is unusual for me mm-hmm. but every day i think of I, if i had done this which is bullshit everybody thinks that if i did this this and this i would have been at least in the final three but yeah i think a guy like me was never going to win that probably why just because enemies like people are like he's got a big person like you know does he need the money which is part of it too which i think is bullshit but mm-hmm. whatever like I, I think it's yeah i think like you're a nice guy mm-hmm. um you know, uh, who won season one? Uh, Tommy did. Yeah. Still nice, kind of an unassuming sort of personality. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, we'll see. But it was good. I mean, it was, it was it was fun. I would definitely do it again. Would you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's fun. It's just an experience that you can't... You can't, can't, can't emulate it. Can't, yeah, no. you can't do it. No. It's impossible. So that's the one thing. Like, after that, I was on, like, such a high. I was like, what could I do now to, like, you know? I was like, should I fucking fight in rough and rowdy? Should I, you <laughs> right. know what I mean? You get addicted like, to the... Uh, yeah, yeah, you do. Because right? uh, I just done the Ryder Cup before that, which was wild, too. I'm sure. Guy who loves golf. Guy yeah, who's kind of the center of it. Like, so So then here I'm thinking, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to win this fucking thing. Yeah. And I told you this when we're walking up here. You get eliminated. I get stabbed in the back by Che. And you're, this is your whole life, these three days. Like, it's you're consumed. You're in mm-hmm. the trenches with these guys. And you're scheming and you're fighting. You're getting ready for this game and you're fighting. Cameras are falling around all the time. They're following every meal you have, everything you do. You go in this room. You go in this room over here and talk to Che. Oh, you text Kevin. He comes over. Oh, here's Philoberg. Oh, here's Will. You're in it. You're in it. You're in it. Your hands are shaking. Yeah. You get eliminated. You go and do your confession. You walk out. You take a right. And Brandon Walker's sister hands you a piece of paper. Says, you're at the hotel over here. Have a good night. And then you're outside. That's it. And you're like what do I do with all this stuff? Yeah. I walked around for like an hour, like <laughs> thinking like, what the fuck just, and I'm texting people who are still in the game and I could tell, that's how I felt when the guys who got eliminated texted me. I was like, give a fuck about this guy. He's gone. He didn't yeah. do me any good. Like, yeah. And I could tell they were being nice, but they're like, Kirk, you're out of the game. Like we're moving on. I'm like, yeah, but I got fucked over here. And like, yeah, we, you know, oh yeah, it's too bad. And like, yeah. but I know they're doing exactly what I want to be doing at the time. They're yeah. fucking scheming and they're battling and like, oh, Fuck. Yeah, you're socially, emotionally, oh, physically just drained. God. You know, just I went drained. to the hotel and passed out. Oh, I was yeah. so bummed. So I remember bummed. that. I didn't, obviously, it was different. because You I, won. Yeah, I won. So yeah. I, I left them the very last day. I was the very last But person. the next day is like. But even even the, the last shoot, I think, was on a Friday night. Yeah. Even just walking out and seeing the outside again <laughs> for the first time in a week, because you genuinely don't leave. Right. Like, you know, mm-hmm. well, it was like, holy shit, you know. Yeah, like, Compton yeah. texted me just this week. He's like, I, he's like, I just miss doing it. I was like, I do too. <laughs> Dude, that's like, fun. I was like, and they'll, they'll. I was talking to Dave today. I'm sure they'll bring it back in like a year or two. Probably try and bring some of the people back. I just don't know for the work. This I, I don't. I have no idea. I don't know. You don't think so? He said, Wait, so there's not going to be a season next year. He said there is, but I think he's still talking about he wants oh, to bring like different kind of casts and stuff. He's only doing all female cast. I think that'd be interesting. Yeah, it's a, I think it's a good idea for yeah. a one-off. Yeah, um, it'd be interesting. But yeah, I don't know. I mean, I would. If Dave's in and those guys are in, I'll do it. I mean, yeah. Why not? You, you, you'll do it. You're fine. You'll be first in the line. I would want to do it, though. I would want to do it if it's me and, like, people are not part of that game. Okay. I don't want to do it where I'm, like, the target, like, bad guy. Like, oh, here comes the bad uh, guy. Okay. I, I, that doesn't do me any good. I don't want to go for a day and get eliminated when Chris Clemmer and fucking, you know, whoever <laughs> vote me out. Like, I don't need that in my life. My life's too short for that. I got to be honest, so that sounds kind of entertaining. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, you know. I don't, you know, I, I don't, I, yeah. That'd be yeah. a real curve versus the world. <laughs> right. And I never, and it's funny, is I would have loved to have won it, but like, when you're in there, your prize was 10 grand? Yes. Like, 
I'm guessing during the game itself, you're not really thinking about the ten grand. No, like, no, you just want to win. You I'm just like, want to win. One point, personally. somebody's like, yeah, I was like, somebody said like, yeah, you can remember this for a hundred thousand. I was like, oh fuck, that's right. Like shit, we're playing, yeah. but like you're just in it. Like you're. I would have done it for free if everyone else had done it. One hundred percent, I do. I think I got like fifty two hundred bucks, and I right, got like yeah, right. I didn't even get my mattress yet. You know that? You haven't got your mattress no, yet? <laughs> that they were supposed to send me. You know, so it's like no, it wasn't about that, but it's just being like, all right, you know, it's kind of like one of those things where you check the Wikipedia's too. Like you're etched in, kind of. It's you true. Know? It's like trivia. Like, yeah, I, trivia. I, yes, I am. I am. You know, you're etched. Yeah, fewer men have won. Tri- more men have walked on the moon than have won bar- uh, than than <laughs> than one barstool of trivia. Exactly. Like, uh, a dozen trivia. Like I'm a cha- and I'm the only MVP ever in the league. So exactly. Yes, there's things like that that mean like even the dumb mini golf thing in Arizona this year during the Super Bowl. I took it so fucking seriously. Everyone else left. I I practiced for like an hour and a half. I never told anybody this. I'll tell you this. The <laughs> next day, that morning, I drove to that course and tried to get in to practice some more. And there was a guy there. He's like, I can't let you in. It's not open yet. And I stood there and like looked at a couple of the holes. Just looked at them. Just to size them up. Yeah, just look at it. Like, am I missing something here? And then, like, I got there. Or, like, I took it so. F- I don't even remember. I won. It. I don't even know if like. Oh, Dave. I got a fifteen thousand dollar bet. Dave bet fifty, uh, which I lost. But I didn't even really care. I was like, I just wanted to fucking win. Just want to be. Yeah. It's all we could do at this point in my life. I'm old. Like, I can't. So yeah, I was bummed out. And I, oh, I was so mad at Chad. I'm still mad at Chad. I was so fucking upset. So upset. And now sometimes if I can't sleep in the middle, I wake up and I'll be like, boy, if I. What it really comes down to though is like. I just didn't want to spend any more time with Nate. <laughs> so <laughs> I'd rather have not won the hundred thousand dollars and not spend time with Nate. I think I think we vote Nate out because he's just too annoying. Well, that's a thing in Survivor, real Survivor. Like I know, if you're, but, you know. but you got to be more disciplined than that. Yeah, and for I just sure. didn't have it early on. I was that was my first sign. I should have been like, this isn't going to be for not, you. not for me. Yeah. yeah, but I had a great time. Good. I mean, it sounds like just all that in general, and that's really what is is so like invaluable to bar stools, stuff shit like that. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, yeah, you could you know. You, you could probably start a Patreon. You'll 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 make a little money. And oh sure, still have great. the show yeah. and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like all that shit is just so yeah. awesome. Even this tomorrow will be great. Even like seeing like I like being able to parachute in like five times a year, mm-hmm. four times. Fuck around with everybody and then get out. Like it doesn't. It's still new enough when I'm here. Like it's not. You know I don't know. Like uh, I'm sure you guys. I, I would not be happy working with this many people every day. Yeah. Now, I get everyone's kind of silo, but I think I would just get sick of seeing Brandon Walker shoot free throws. <laughs> like, at some point, it's like, life's too short. <laughs> no, yeah, I, I could see that. Yeah. Now, now do you, like, kind of... But are, are you kind of someone who, like, always waits for the other shoe to drop? Mm. Yeah, I, well, I think I have been. I, I mean, but I, I feel very optimistic about being here. Like, I mean, I, Good. I really like working here. I don't, you know... I've been here for four, a little over four years now. You know, and I, I felt like I'll be fair. Like when Penn owned Bar, so it didn't affect our show at all. Like we never got it, but it just feels better that now that Dave owns. Like I just feel better about it. Like I care. It's probably an indication of maybe I should have worked harder, even harder. When I was Penn on the company, but now I do think about like this guy owns the company. Like he's he's put a lot in here. So you know, it means I work a little harder on Cyber Monday, or if it means I do, we did a pay per view. For our show in Saco, yeah, for through Barstool, which did well, and we uh, we named our new producer there. In the past, I probably wouldn't have thought of that, but I was like, well, if we can make the company eighty or hundred grand or whatever, let's fucking do it. And I get part of it, which is nice, but also just ideas to help the co- you know where I probably wasn't that proactive when Penn owned it. Yeah, from a business side, but even like the the relationships and your your outlook on everything from there and EI is kind of crazy, crazy, insanely different, cr- crazy, cra- and I was. You know, I I think the one unifying thing between EEI, between radio and Barstool, the only thing in common is that salespeople are stupid. But salespeople <laughs> are stupid everywhere. Like that's just a rule of life. Mm-hmm. They're they're lazy. They're they'll lie to your face and they're stupid. What about Stephen Chair? As a salesperson, or as a human being, a human being. We're just he's, human just, he's like a top. He's like a Mount Rushmore bad person of all time. <laughs> Bin Laden, Hitler. K. Marco, Stephen Shea. Who was the Stephen guy? Stephen Shea. That, who, who was the guy? Zambrano? Was he your guy? Joey Zarbano? Yeah, was he. But he was a puppet. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he was like, that went all the way up to the top. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, then, Kirk. Thank you. Eddie, anytime. Yeah. How are you? You're, you're, are you okay being in the, uh, now you're a small fish in this big pond? It's a big difference, man. Yeah. It's Do you a like big it? difference. You know, there's, there's, there's pros and cons to everything, you know? I'm getting used to it. Yeah. Do you, you feel know? like you work for Dan Katz or no? Um, it's still pretty free. You just kind of come in. Yeah, yeah, You guys yeah. hear, uh, this is like your little wing here. 
Kind of, yeah. Like yeah. we're here, Anus is next door, and then right. there's a couple open podcast rooms yeah. over there. But they want us to be in this area because they got the eye in the sky. So it's kind of like a uh, Truman Show. In case something happens, they pull the tapes. Uh, you know? So it's kind of like a reality box, right? I guess. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's different. You know what I mean? It's just it's been a, it's been a real it's been a very interesting weird year for us as a group. You know? I remember when I was. When I was there for trivia, that was the day Carl showed up for the first time in the office, I think, after. It was. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was. Yes. I remember that, too. So, yeah. Just going. I mean, even just like this last 16 months for me, like show with Dave ended. Right. Then that whole thing with right. Carl happened. And then right. now we, we are d placed in a new home where it's like everybody knows each other. But we don't know them. Right, everybody so, moved to where you are. But yeah, so they're yeah, already so weird, friends. Right. So we like have it like a stranger in our own home. You know kind them, of thing. But yes, yeah, and we're not yeah, like, yeah, and it's not yeah, like, yeah, contentious. No, not at all. But it's just like you're getting used to it. It's right. a new, it's a new, it's a new thing. Because you know, too, you had this as well. Where, and maybe you're. It sounds like you're a little more unplugged, I guess, with yeah. like the 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 arm from HQ. It's it's, it's hard to make it on your own. You know, like we were, we were, yeah. in, we were on an island like you, right? And like, we're not fucking Taylor Lewan who played for the Tennessee Titans <laughs> right, for nine right, years. Right, right. We're not Pat McAfee, who's right. a, you know what I mean? Like, right. we're not Spin Chicklets, who's Ryan Whitney and like who right. are fucking massive. We're just fucking three, four guys from Chicago who quit their jobs in their thirties to go work at Barstool. Right. You know, right. so yeah. it's it's hard. You know? Yeah, I mean, I'm no, I get, I totally get that because I have no HQ. Like, no, no direct. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I mean, maybe other shows do. I don't know. I mm -hmm. see these shows. I'm good friends with Whitney, and I'll be at these events with these guys, and they have like 14 people working for them. I'm like that looks fucking terrible. Like <laughs> I have like one, produ two producers, and that's it. Like yeah, you, and I get it. Those shows are huge operationally. Yeah, but, but yeah, I, I mean, but it's a good spot that you come in, you do your thing, you leave, right? For sure. Yeah. No, no. nobody's never any. No, female. there's never any like oh like you guys need to be doing this. Thing. There's right. all they're all it's always true to that where it's like you kind of you know they'll they'll give advice, they'll give input, yeah, you know, but it's always kind of how many guests do you guys have though? As far as just in general, like outside, just guest guests. Oh, like like that have been in this just in general. Like who's the last guest you had on that's outside of Barstool? on this podcast? Yeah, Oof. or the one or the you know, any of the ones. I mean, I, so this one is is just kind of my show, and right? Kind of do what i want right like last last month i had or last week i had a chicago fireman on right and i had like a you know a, a high school football coach on okay you know so like it's like that but as far as like a big big name that's a good question you know once i don't know like you know there's a lot of there's a lot at the top that kind of get, right. gets that so but. should do uh next year isn't it 2024 is the 30th anniversary of hoop dreams i think it is yeah. Should have those guys on. That's right. What That was 90, 92, 94, right? 94, 94. I think it yeah. was 94. Yeah, that'd be good. I remember seeing that in the theater. I saw it in the theater. Yeah. And yeah, I've seen I've watched that movie like 10 times. Arthur Ag. yeah. Right, and William Gates, yeah. Yeah, I'm sad I couldn't get Pingator on before he passed he away. He just passed away, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you, yeah. Uh, I, I, we, my school was in the same conference as St. Okay. Joe's. So obviously- did, I was, was he was he accurately portrayed that movie? Um. I, I don't know. It seemed like people seemed loved like, him who played for him. Okay. You know, yeah, it seemed like yeah. people really, you know. 94, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, 94. 94. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. That would be that would be definitely something cool to do. We can't book any guests. My producers stink. We can't get fucking Frank Stallone on. Not Sylvester Stallone, Frank Stallone. Frank? Can't even get, we can't get any, nothing against Frank. I love Frank. We can't get anybody on. Well, they're new. Right? We can't, yeah, I mean, we can't, but I mean, like, we are, I, I don't know what it is, and like, I'm not going to reach out to Kelly Martin. She's an enemy. So I'm not going to do that. So like, it's like we're fucked. You know, I'm sitting there like, can I get Frank Stallone for 10 minutes? No. Can I get Carl Weathers? No. I just want to talk about Rocky with somebody. That's it. That's all. <laughs> 20 minutes. Thank you did. I think you did. Did you do that Creed 2 watch along with me and Brandon Walker? Yes. Was that you? That was you, yeah, right? That was me, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was pandemic time, right? Yes. I hate yeah. that movie. You hate that movie. I think I turned you too. I you did, remember you yes. coming in. I was like, Kirk, this is shit. Well, like, it was endless. I remember never ending. Yeah, that mm. one scene in the hotel with his with his girlfriend. That was, was like tough. a fifteen minute scene. Did you watch Creed Three? Yes, which I thought it was bounced better, back. Thought. I thought it bounced back. It, yeah, I missed I I kinda I'm a sly guy, so I missed him, but like True. It, but but it was I'll tell you, I mean the guy's obviously got some issues, but Jonathan Major's fucking great in that movie. Yeah. You're fucking great. He was awesome. That was a good that was a good that movie I agree, that movie was good. Are you excited for the uh Iron Claw? I am, yeah, yeah. Should be pretty funny. Saw it last week. <laughs> yeah, a lot of laughs. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was comedy. <laughs> it was, basically, no, you did see it. Yeah, I saw it last week. How'd you see it? Uh, I got invited to a screener. 
the fuck have you seen this before me? Got it, got it. What screen did you go to? Uh, I don't know. Right here? What do you mean you don't know? Well, it was just a random... So I, it's funny. It's funny to say because I was like, it's not playing in Boston yet. I looked up. I was like, maybe it's playing in Chicago. It's not. Mm. Tell gone to see it tonight. If this was a week, I would have gone with you. You could. Yes, they asked me. I don't want to go. I, I went alone. Do you bring? Oh, you bring anybody? I, I asked fucking Brandon Walker, but he's. Oh, why didn't he go? He because he's. He, he looks yeah. like. Uh, he's gone. Uh, yeah, I mean, I know the story very well. It, it was good though. Uh, I enjoyed it. Well, I, yeah. I thought. I don't know. I don't know how much you want me to get into it. I know everything about. I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Yeah, how was Zach Efron? He was really good. I yeah, thought. I heard that. He was really strong. How about the kid from the Bear? He was. He was. He was solid. Yeah. yeah. He, he was good too. Which one is he? Uh, he is Carrie. So he. I thought Zach the, Efron was Carrie, no? No, no, Zach Efron is Kevin. Oh, he is. Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, that makes more sense. I yes. guess. Yeah. Uh-huh. Kevin's still alive. Yes. The, the crazy thing is, you know, they didn't. They they only did. They cut out one. Of they the, cut out one of the kids. Yeah. The youngest one. Yes. The little one. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. yeah. But and my thing is, it's. A damn near impossible story to tell in two hours. Yeah, it feels like it's like a Netflix series. You can't tell the whole no. story in, two, in you yeah. know. So, the guy who played Ric Flair wasn't great. But is he in it a lot? Was who? Is he in it a lot or no? No, no, no. Uh, it's a small scene, so you got, I could overlook it. But I really like it. It's probably one of the most enjoyable. Probably one of my top top three five movies I've seen this year. Really? Yeah. What's number one? Ah, uh, you're gonna hate this. I think. Did you like Air? I enjoyed it. I I was like I thought it was fun. That last scene it was I didn't like when he was pitching them in the office. I didn't like that. That was <laughs> it was I'll tell you what, I'll give you a quick air story. We my brother and I went to the Masters this year. And uh we go every year, we try to go. And um the day after it was a it rained out the whole day. We didn't have tickets that day, but we were just hanging around, we we're gonna watch it all weekend and play golf. We wanted to see air, so we went to see it and we got up and left in the middle of that speech. Really? Yeah, I was like, Ryan, we're leaving. I can't watch this. It's making me fucking sick. Oh, no. Yeah. And there was a Bruce Springsteen part of the movie I didn't like either. <laughs> Jason Bateman talks about Born in the USA and how it's misinterpreted. I'm like, no shit. Like, we've yeah. heard this a million times. It's fine. It's a fine It's a fine movie. It's your number one movie of the year? Did you see Oppenheimer? I did see Oppenheimer. You have, you have Air over Oppenheimer? I have Air over Oppenheimer. Oh, Jesus, Eddie. I have what, Air over Oppenheimer. What are you doing? I've seen like 18 or so this year. I see a lot of movies. So do I. Yeah. Did you like... Uh, uh, Killers? Yeah. I thought it was okay. Yeah, I like it less and less when I think about it. I liked it, but I, I would probably knock it down a peg or two. Yeah. Yeah. Did you see Past Lives? No, I did not. It's a good movie. Um, May, December? No. Nope. Netflix now, Portman and Julian Moore, no? It's mm-hmm. a lot of Oscar buzz. Yeah. What's number two on your list? I haven't gone through it yet. Iron Claw is it's top, top. It might be. I, I think I'm doing one more left. I think I'm going to do Wonka and end the year. And then I'm going to go through my list and kind of see what, okay. rank them where I want. What you know, would, would also be in the mix? Um, let me pull up my. Hey, you have a list? I, well, I got AMC. You know, I got the oh, pass. You got the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you got that or no? I don't. You just pay every time. I know I should do that. I don't have any apps. I can't figure it out. What do you mean you don't have any apps? Look how many apps like that. Well, you just got the. I've never app. ordered anything on Amazon in my life. <laughs> no, stop. Never, not once. My daughter does. I'll text her. I'll be like, I like this book, and she orders it. I don't know how to do it. So your phone is just like the alarm clock and the flashlight. Pretty much, I figured out the flashlight a year ago. Did you? Yeah, by mistake. Yeah, I was like, "What the <laughs> fuck is going on here?" I was freaking out. That's wild. Yeah, it's not easy being old, Eddie. <laughs> uh, I'll probably, I'll probably, Oppenheimer's probably too. Great movie. Talk to me was really good. The scary movie. Did you see that? I did. Yeah, we, yeah. Harry and I saw that. Yep. Yeah, that, that was, was very good. I didn't hate the Indiana Jones as much as everyone did. The best part of the Indiana Jones movie was the beginning when he was young. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. didn't like the water stuff, and I didn't like. I felt like they should have killed him at the end. I liked that he was. Like from a story thing at the end, I was like, "This is actually a good way to go." Like in the olden in the past, in the past like he was yeah. happy. Like I like that. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. That yeah. was it. Wasn't terrible. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I did, I did interest. Yeah, I guess, I guess maybe Iron Claw two, Oppenheimer three. I would say that's my top three of the year. Wow, Air number one. Huh? I, I liked it. It was just a movie where, I don't know. They, I'm a big nostalgia guy. Yeah, and they just they, fucking oh, stuffed it in my yeah, mouth for eighties sure. nostalgia fest. Yes. You know, yeah, coming be, out to money ain't for nothing. Yeah, like that was yeah, yeah, the, the movie to that. Yeah, in the big country. Yeah, they had a lot of that stuff going. That's, yes. I mean, I, I didn't love it, but yeah, it's I, I, I appreciate that. I appreciate. Yeah. That. Are you gonna see Wonka? <sighs> I'm not thrilled about it, but I feel like I have to. I mean, isn't that what Dan Katz is doing here? <laughs> <laughs> Aren't you guys all characters and need to build a palace for? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, Wonka creeps me out. He seems like a real creep to me always when I watch these movies. Shyamalan? No, 
Willy Wonka in general. Oh, really? He always gives me the... As a kid, he gave me the creeps. So you don't even like the original? Michael Jackson vibes. Like, I'm pretty sure he <laughs> probably gave Charlie a handjob at some point. Huh. Yeah. Well, I guess this is just... Like, why was he such a dick? Like, in that... What, what was he such an asshole for? Why is he this test? Why is he testing these fucking people? I don't know. No, I don't get it. Might be the movie for you now, because you'll get to hear his backstory of why he was. I'm not a Chalamet guy either. No. He's not like... I grew up with, like... Like, Mel Gibson, like, Clint Eastwood, Harrison Ford... Some some men, men, <laughs> men. Like nothing gets Chalamet, but like, yeah. Can you see Chalamet playing? Like this is where I give Leo credit. Leo became a man, like a man. Mm-hmm. Like, can you see Chalamet uh, in playing the Leo role in The Departed? No. Or in The Revenant? No. That's what I mean. Like, is he ever going to get there? Who's going to get there from this generation, Eddie? You're a movie goer. You've gone to AMC many times. You have the app. I uh, I mean, who is that? I have my my top five actor list. I think. Well, like I have all my, time. Yeah. Well, like <laughs> what cur- do you mean? currently, currently <laughs> go ahead. Currently, I currently. Like, oh, it changes. Currently, yeah, yeah. Currently, all right. Go ahead. Uh, Christian Bale, great. But he's older. I'm saying, like, I'm saying that generation. But yeah, he's great. Bale's always great. Yeah, Bale. Uh, I think Jake Gyllenhaal is phenomenal. Great. I think he's Does so lot, underrated. I agree. Kirk. I agree. I agree. He's. I met him. Did you? Oh yeah. So my old partner Jerry knew Jeff Bowman, who he played in the movie Stronger, the the kid who lost his legs in the yes, marathon bombing. Yes. Jerry is is really good friends with his uh, dad, and like I know, J- unbelievable. And he's a, Jake Gyllenhaal is my favorite movie of the century. My number one movie of the century, Jake Gyllenhaal's first build in. Which one is that? Zodiac. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah, great. Okay. I think he's a good actor. Who you only you only has coming up next? Is he doing that Roadhouse? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah which I'm all in for. Yeah, I, I, I'm gonna see it for sure. I want to see this list. Go ahead. Uh, I so I have. Did your list is two people, Eddie? Well, well, well on, go ahead. We got those two. Yeah, I actually only have four right now. I, <laughs> so one's a girl, Tony Collette. I think is always good, sensational. She's unbelievable in what you call it. Uh, uh, yes, the A twenty four movie. Yeah, not Hereditary. Uh, hereditary. Hereditary. Yeah, she's hereditary. Great. She's great. She's always great. And four, you'll know him, but it might be a deep cut for people listening. Ben Mendelsohn. Ben Mendelsohn's good. I think he's amazing. He's good. Yeah, he's yeah. never gotten that. Yeah, yeah. He's a good character. Who's those your favorite actors of all time or currently? Currently. Who's your favorite current. actor of all time? Mine's Gene Hackman. Really? Yes. And The Replacements? Probably not my favorite Gene Hackman <laughs> role, but yeah, I mean, he's in The Replacements, Eddie. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. Uh, what, what's your favorite Hackman role? Uh, either Unforgiven. Um, have you seen that, the Clint Eastwood movie? The no, Western? No, no, no. no, no I've not. Uh, have you seen The French Connection? He won an Oscar for that, too. Mm-hmm. No. See, I'm, I'm a movie guy, but like I- You don't I got, go back. I got a lot of holes in my-, in my uh, Yeah, go category. back. Kick back, you know, go to the house of yours, you know, watch it, you know, mix it, mix it in every once in a yeah. while. No, I would. I definitely yeah. would. I just like, and then like you see, like, I don't see like all the uh, foo-foo Oscar buzz ones. Like I'll you see like, like, yeah, I'll yeah. see like Scream 6 and shit like that. Yeah. You know, like, so you care more about like, uh, uh, yeah, like horror as well. Yeah. I'm a big horror guy. Yeah, Harry, my son, Harry is massive in the horror. Really? So we see everything. We've gone to see everything. Oh, so what's, I've seen them all too. Boogeyman was terrible. Did you see yeah. that one? Yes. Our favorite. Horror movie. My favorite horror movie the last couple of years was Barbarian. That was a lot of fun. Justin that was Long, good. I thought, should have been nominated for an Academy Award. I'm dead serious. <laughs> he was he good. Was fucking great in that movie. He was good. Um, Did you like Smile? Yeah, it was okay. I thought he, it was good. He liked it more than me. Um, they're doing a sequel. Are they? Yeah. It made a lot of money. This is the. Did yeah, you like Megan? Do. I didn't see Megan. Oh, that mm-hmm. was pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, it was stupid, but it was pretty good. The Black Phone. The black phone we liked. I like that too. Yep. Yeah. We just saw. We actually just saw the last uh, Insidious, the newest one. How oh, was that one? It was all right. Got bad reviews, right? Yeah, it wasn't great. Yeah. It wasn't great. Do you always listen? Or are you just like I'm Kirk Minahan? I'm making up the mind of if this movie's good or not. Do you look at the reviews? Oh, um, I read reviews, but I don't. No, I'm pretty. Yeah, no, I'm okay. Like I didn't like Top Gun Maverick. What? I didn't, and Top Gun's one of my favorite movies. Really? I didn't like Top Gun Maverick. <sighs> just didn't like it. I walked out feeling empty, which bummed me out. I'm wrong. Everyone else liked it, but they just didn't do it for me. See, that's crazy because I watched Top Gun like a week before I saw Maverick. Yeah, and it's I was one like, of my favorite movies. It's like Top Gun. It's like it's fine. Yeah. See, it's, it's nostalgia. Yes. Here's my. This is why I think Creed. I think of Creed. And I think of Top Gun Maverick. Like Tom Cruise has that scene with Val Kilmer, right? Val Kilmer's like, you got to teach these kids. They have to learn from you. And like 10 minutes later, Cruz literally hijacks a plane and does what the other kids can't do. It would be like if Stallone stood in for Creed and fought 
Drago's kid. Like it didn't make any sense. I hate, at that point, they lost me. I see. I think about this stuff too with movies. I overanalyze. I think about yeah. it too much. I suppose just having a good time, which everybody had. Obviously, I'm wrong about Top Gun Maverick. So, what was more devastating, walking out of that theater, or when Kaylin Walker gave you that hotel ticket? <sighs> she was so callous. I think she knew <laughs> that Brandon would be so happy. Yeah. She literally was like, and like the blood went on my body. It was like. <laughs> There's no way to emulate it on the street. I was like, how can I get this fix? There's nothing. I like, go well, escape room. Like, there's nothing I can do. <laughs> yeah. Nothing. I like, go joint, play a pickup basketball game. Under the Brooklyn Bridge. I don't know. Like, it's over. And I'll never know. You know what it's like to be a champion of this. You, uh, Tommy, and well, people now listening on Thursday will know, but I won't say who it is because I'm not going to tell you. You yeah. might know, but I, you know, I won't give that away. Yeah. I won't do it. Well, season four. We'll see you back, I'm sure. We'll see. We'll see. Any. You need it. You need it. I see it in you. You need it. I'm old. I'm in my fifties. <laughs> I, I, I just can't. I'm like Rudy, season one. <laughs> can't do it. It's funny. Yeah. Um. All right, then, Kirk. Anytime, Eddie. I'm here, buddy. Yeah. No, I appreciate. It. I like of talking course. up with you. Sure. For sure. You. All right, everybody. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Uh, we'll be back on Monday. We'll see you then.